Hey y'all, Ruben here from Chavez Custom Cutlery. So, I decided I wanted to do a tutorial on how to make a knife from a lawnmower blade. Now there's a lot of um, people out there who say you can't do it. Um, I've done it and I want to show you how I've done it. So, uh, this is the lawnmower blade that we're going to be working with. A buddy of mine gave this to me and uh, so... I'm not going to get into a lot of details, but um, I'm just going to go as quickly as possible. So the first thing I like to do is I like to anneal the metal. Annealing basically is you heat it up to critical temperature and then you bring it down really slow. And that makes the metal softer and easier to cut. I'll be using a grinding wheel with excuse me an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel on it to do the cutting on this steel and I'm going to show you the two techniques on you making knives from uh, lawnmower blades or any other metal so the two techniques are going to be stock removal and uh, forging so let's get on to the first step alright so here is step one uh, what I like to do is I like to take several uh, blades and other materials that I want to anneal. And so with this, this lawnmower blade, I'm going to set it inside there and just let it go all night long. And this uh, outdoor burner that I got here is filled with a lot of scrap wood but it's going to get hot enough to bring that metal up to critical and then bring it down and so in the morning when it's cooled off we're going to go on to the next step okay so it's the next following morning after the burn and I've stuck some other metal in there it wasn't going to waste the fire but we'll pull out the one we started with so by now this is cold steel but it is in an annealed state now basically it's soft so now we just take it to the workbench and then we start drawing out our profile and then we're going to use both techniques to make knives out of this uh, forging and stock removal okay before I begin <clears throat> safety devices ears hands eyes there is no excuse for not wearing just the simple items that will protect you it's not worth acting macho and getting cut or getting a shaving of metal in your eyes. You'll feel really dumb about yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this to my table here. I'll try not to move the camera while I'm doing it. And just cut off that working piece. You don't have to use an angle grinder. You could use a hacksaw, but I like using the angle grinder because it makes the job a lot faster. But even though the job is faster, uh, for me, slow and steady wins the race. Alright, I had a little bit of a design change while I was cutting. I'm going to make the blade a little bit wider. But this is the very rough uh, profile of the knife. 
And so now, what I'll do is I'll continue again with the angle grinder, but I'll be using a grinding disc and some uh, sanding disc to profile knife. Okay, so I've moved the piece over to my trusty bench vise. <clears throat> and I've changed the cutoff wheel to a grinding wheel on the angle grinder. I apologize, I don't have a better angle to show you this. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to improve the profile on this so it's not as rough. And once again, protection, gloves, glasses, ears. Okay, that's some of the profile finessed up a little bit more. I am going to continue profiling, and I'll show you when I'm done with that. All right, so I cleaned up on some more of the profiling on the knife. And uh, <clears throat> use the grinding wheel and a flat disc and then the, uh, the uh, Dremel. Finishing up some more profiling with a flap disc. Uh, changed quite a bit. Well, that's what uh, that's what happens when you get creative in your mind. So, put that knock down there so when I start really putting in my bevels, I know not to go too far. So now, um, time to put in the faux bevels, and then after that, work on the handle. All right, so maybe if I turn the camera and get a better view of this. There we go. All right, uh, finished finessing up some of that profile in. I did the bevels by hand. They're not perfect, which is okay. You don't want a sharp edge when you're doing your bevels. You want to leave some beef there. So when you heat treat, it doesn't crack, excuse me, it doesn't warp. And I got the handle straightened out. It's a little bit long. But that's okay, because I want to make this end a glass breaking in. 
And so uh, let's head over to part two.